Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, gaming, but, uh, but AI as well. Um, yeah, you'll get to, to learn a little bit about who we are and, and what we do. Let's see. Okay, so I guess to, to kick things off, who here has uh, heard of Aether before? Put up your hand if you, if you know or have heard of Aether. All right, a couple of hands, that's always good. Um, long story short, we are, we're a, we'll get into this, but we're a, we're a GPU cloud, right? A decentralized GPU cloud. Uh, we actually started um, in the gaming space building a decentralized cloud for uh, cloud gaming services, which is a, a, a GPU-reliant service. Um, we realized that scaling infrastructure in a centralized way has a lot of performance and, and cost limitations, and we thought, hey, this is a really cool opportunity to uh, do something that uh, was decentralized, but also actually had a technical use case, I think, for that decentralization, uh, which, is, which is pretty cool. So what, what do we actually do, right? Well, I think the best way to understand what we do is to actually understand the problem that we solve uh, first, right? Uh, you've seen... Uh, big personalities in the space like Elon Musk come out and say things like, you know, GPUs are, are harder to buy than drugs, right? You've got uh, people like Zuckerberg purchasing just over, just over $10 billion worth of GPUs uh, at a single time, right? Essentially, the GPU resource uh, is uh, a, a commodity of the future that is increasingly difficult to access uh, if you aren't one of uh, the biggest tech companies uh, in the world, right? So we kind of uh, looked at this problem uh, pretty closely uh, at Aether, and, and we kind of broke that problem down into these four uh, key pieces, right? The first, of course, is, is buy pressure, right? All of these big tech companies, whether you're an OpenAI or a Google or a Microsoft or an Anthropic, you essentially have an insatiable appetite for compute, right? Uh, due to the way that um, uh, AI scales, right, and, and uh, the way that um, capability in AI uh, is generated, uh, the more access you have to GPUs and to data, uh, effectively, the smarter your models can become. And it's, uh, it's, it's literally that simple. It's kind of one plus one equals two. Uh, so much so that um, the more money you have, the more likely you are to, to win this race. Uh, and, you know, it's arguably the most important race in human history, right? So you have this buy pressure that isn't going away and is essentially insatiable, uh, and on top of that, you have a limited resource, right? So you have these production limitations. Uh, NVIDIA is effectively the only company that's, um, that's producing the, the, the chips that people, uh, the companies like to build on at the moment, uh, and they can't obviously produce enough. When we actually look at kind of LLMs and uh, the AI space itself, uh, the other kind of thing that's, that's relatively interesting is that uh, as models get more intelligent, uh, as they kind of progress um, to later stage versions of themselves, uh, they become exponentially more expensive to train, right? ChatGPT3 was exponentially more expensive than, than ChatGPT2. ChatGPT4, exponentially more expensive than ChatGPT3, right? And that expense is uh, a factor of how much compute is required uh, to train the models, how much data is required to, to train the models. But what we're seeing is this exponential increase in the requirements to train later stage frontier models. But within that same period, we're not seeing an exponential increase in the amount of compute provided to the market. We're not seeing an exponential increase in the performance of the chips that are coming onto the market. So you kind of have this widening gap between the requirements of later stage models and the amount of compute that, uh, that exists, right? And then, you know, throw onto that the fact that there's more and more of these uh, companies uh, fighting for um, space within the frontier model uh, ecosystem, and it's, uh, it's a, it almost seems like a losing battle from a compute perspective, right? But uh, the part of the problem that Aether chose to focus on was really the efficiency issue. Right? You have a huge amount of this compute that's existing in, in data centers owned by different tech companies, kind of distributed all over the world, right? and how well are companies managing that compute? How, uh, what's their utilization look like? Right? And what we realized was that actually uh, companies are pretty bad at uh, managing this incredibly expensive resource. Right? Downtime is just going to burn a hole in your pocket uh, incredibly quickly, especially considering this is the most expensive compute that uh, there's essentially ever been. Um, so 
we looked at that and, and we, built, uh, we built Aether, right? We're a decentralized enterprise grade GPU cloud infrastructure for AI and gaming companies. Uh, we aggregate GPUs from tech companies, enterprises, crypto, mining organizations, uh, infrastructure funds, pretty much anyone that has GPUs, uh, and actually anyone that wants to own GPUs, for example, can also contribute them to our network. But uh, we are like a, an infrastructure layer that aggregates and collects all of this GPU uh, power uh, all over the world and makes it kind of more accessible for, um, for companies to, to access, uh, particularly more accessible for uh, those uh, companies and builders that are not uh, just uh, Google or, or an OpenAI, for example. So what does that stack look like? Uh, pretty, pretty basic. Uh, obviously, you've got uh, all of these GPUs coming from the different GPU providers. They aggregate into our cloud, and then uh, Aether makes those uh, accessible to companies all over the world. From a product perspective, what does it look like? I think the key here uh, is the customer that Aether serves, right? We're, we're enterprise focused. Every GPU within our network is enterprise grade, and, and I'll talk about that uh, in a second. But enterprises don't like to have to learn new things, right? And, and there's no reason to reinvent the wheel when it comes to accessing uh, GPU resources, right? So this uh, dashboard and the, the way that you actually uh, onboard uh, GPUs from our network is, is probably the exact same as it is across any platform that does something similar uh, to us, right? You choose a location, you choose the type of GPU, you choose how long you want it for, and you choose uh, how many you want, right? The only difference between our platform and uh, others is, of course, that you make that transaction in uh, ATH, our, our native uh, token. The flip side, obviously, of the marketplace is that you can also provide GPUs to Aether's ecosystem. Right? If you're a, an enterprise customer, sorry, if you're an enterprise um, infrastructure owner and you have a large amount of GPUs, uh, you can actually onboard those GPUs into Aether's network incredibly quickly. It takes about 15 minutes to go from having uh, an idle um, you know, H100 GPU, for example, to having that GPU live uh, on our network and available to the broader uh, demand ecosystem. So what makes Aether different? Um, who here is a, aware of the term deep in? Right? I think pretty, pretty familiar. Um, decentralized physical infrastructure, right? Decentralized physical infrastructure networks. Uh, we're a deep pin. We're, a, we're an AI deep pin, right? Or a, or a GPU deep pin, right? And I think the biggest difference between Aether and, and maybe other deep pins in the space is that we don't touch consumer grade equipment, right? We don't aggregate, for example, gaming PCs or MacBooks. Um, we don't uh, kind of touch it. And it was a, actually a difficult decision for us, right? Because the best way for a deep in to gain exposure, the best way for a deep in to build community is, of course, by allowing community members to participate in the network, right? Um, no one's going to shill your product more than someone who uh, has, obviously, uh, bags, right? They have their gaming PC connected to the network. Uh, they're going to earn rewards from having that GPU uh, connected, so they want your token to do well, so they talk about you. Um, however, the challenge here is eventually you want your network to be useful, right? You want to be able to sell access and sell that um, utility that you're building within your, your infrastructure. Uh, and it's incredibly difficult to do that when you've built your network on the back of consumer equipment, right? Um, enterprise customers uh, come. Uh, and they, they ask typical enterprise questions, right? What is the uptime of your network? How do you guarantee performance, right? How do you maintain the quality uh, of your ecosystem? And if you have a bunch of consumer GPUs, right, and you don't own them, uh, it's very, very difficult to go to one of these enterprise customers and say, hey, I can guarantee that that GPU that's sitting in someone's uh, living room isn't just going to be shut down at night because... Uh, you know, they're, they're saving on their power bill. Or uh, this GPU will remain accessible even though uh, that user is, is uh, maybe having a YouTube binge and their bandwidth is, throt is throttled, uh, limiting our ability to kind of pull compute from that network, right? So despite the fact that it was actually a, a much more kind of difficult process for us initially, we chose to be entirely enterprise focused, right? So every GPU within Aether's network is uh, enterprise grade, contributed, through a data center or through enterprise-grade network infrastructure. And that means that 
uh, unlike a lot of kind of deep ends in the space, we're 100% capable of servicing uh, the requirements of the biggest tech companies uh, in the world. And that's one of the reasons why we've uh, been able to drive such strong revenue uh, within uh, the crypto space, uh, despite the fact that we are uh, a decentralized hardware network. So what do we have uh, within our um, ecosystem? Right, We have kind of four key products. Uh, obviously, AI training, uh, that's the process of uh, taking a model from ChatGPT2 to ChatGPT3. The process of kind of improving that model is, is called training. Um, we have the largest collection of uh, enterprise-grade high-performance compute infrastructure. Uh, that allows us to do uh, a huge amount of large training runs uh, in a way that aren't possible uh, on any other network within, within crypto. We have AI inferencing. Uh, solutions as well. Inferencing is the, the term for AI doing the job it's been trained for. Like when you query or you ask a question of uh, ChatGPT and it gives you an answer, that process is called uh, inferencing. There's a lot of cool um, kind of opportunities within decentralized networks and, and inferencing and, and the, the kind of uh, potential for low latency uh, kind of access to uh, inferencing compute is, is something that I think will be a bit of a highlight for um, for, for projects like ours over the coming kind of uh, months and, and years. We also have our gaming stack. Um, I might not get time to, to talk about it, but uh, we obviously deliver uh, a, a GPU cloud that hosts cloud gaming uh, instances for, uh, get, for uh, PCs and, and also mobile, uh, mobile gamers. I think I'll just get time to kind of talk about this, but um, Aether actually began our journey providing a GPU cloud for uh, cloud gaming, right? That was kind of um, the reason that we entered into the, the GPU cloud space about four years ago. Um, and the main motivation for doing that was this uh, exact problem here, right? There's 3.3 billion gamers out there, uh, and 2.8 billion of them are gaming on low-end devices, right? Uh, many of the games that uh, those of us in this room would consider mainstream, right? Like a, a Counter-Strike, a World of Warcraft, a Diablo, right, a PUBG, uh, these games are inaccessible to the vast majority of users uh, of low-end um, low equipment, right? But simultaneously, uh, the publishers producing those games are unable to access all of those users with low-end devices, right? It's the single kind of biggest um, piece of the pie that remains kind of uh, untapped within the gaming ecosystem, right? And how are you going to solve that? Well, there's really kind of three ways. Right? First is make everyone more rich. Right? Now everyone can buy any phone or any gaming PC. Everyone can own a PS5 or an Xbox. How likely is that as a solution? You know, probably not, not all that likely. Right? The second is you know, some quantum leap in, in, in technology. All of a sudden now we can produce um, really high performance chips at incredibly low prices. We essentially democratize access to um, cheap, powerful infrastructure for uh, users everywhere. Right? Again, how likely is that? Probably not very. Right? But the third option is abstract away the requirement for users to have uh, high-end equipment. Right? Take away the requirement for a user to own expensive hardware. We're already doing it with storage. Right? Everyone here uh, probably has some form of cloud storage connected to their, uh, their phone. Uh, you probably use you know, Google Docs. Right? Again, uh, you've abstracted away the requirement for that hardware to actually have that, uh, that physical uh, resource. Why don't we do that with compute? Well, the reason is because these networks are incredibly expensive to scale in a centralized way. Right? Uh, but that is exactly why uh, Aether has, uh, has uh, stood up. Right? We're already scaling our infrastructure uh, all across Southeast Asia, across Europe, across the US, uh, across uh, India. We haven't uh, touched. Uh, any of the countries in Africa yet, but we're very hopeful, massive gaming communities um, you know, in, in places like Nigeria. But um, yeah, it's something that we, we really believe in, abstracting away this, uh, this hardware layer from, uh, the, from the users and the gamers all over the world. Anyway, I'll wrap here, but I'll leave uh, on uh, a bit of a highlight slide. Uh, Aether um, did uh, arguably the biggest node sale uh, in history. We raised about 150 mil, selling around 72,000 nodes. We have almost 200 employees now distributed all over the world and a community uh, well over a million strong. But uh, we're always looking for uh, more compute to onboard into our ecosystem, more projects that are looking to access our, our GPUs. And uh, I'd just like to say thank you very much for having me and, and for listening to my talk. Thank you.